Hey everybody, and welcome back to I Do Everyday Automation. This is the second video in the series of how you can take a laptop and turn it into an Android device. So in the first video, that option was more so if you want to use this as a secondary laptop with some light applications for productivity or other things of that nature. This second video is more so geared toward taking that same laptop and using it primarily as an Android TV device. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set up this new ISO and a couple of other things that I've learned along the way. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so in this version of the video, I'm gonna show you how to install the Android TV version of Android x86. This will allow you to have the menu system just like you have on the Android TV and the App Store will work with apps that are meant for TV purposes. That's one of the big drawbacks of installing the Android x86 platform onto a laptop that I noticed in the first version. You'll be limited to using apps that are meant for laptops and tablets, so you won't really get the full effect of using the Android TV which is the whole purpose of us wanting to replace the Fire TV. So the first version of the video is more so if you want to have a laptop that can operate as an Android tablet, but still have the mobility and the option whenever you choose to put it on the TV using the little change that I showed you guys in the first video. So now I'm gonna show you how to image the laptop for use with the Android TV x86 Oreo port. All right, so now for option two, it's gonna be a very similar process. After doing a quick Google search, I stumbled upon a XDA developers page about Android TV Oreo x86. And from there, it took me to this website here where a gentleman by the name, and I'm hoping not to butcher it here, Anthony Moriera. And he's provided a port of Android TV in the x86 platform with the installer and the updates here for you, as well as change logs and an option to donate if you so choose. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to Rufus. We're gonna pull this download that we've already downloaded. open and this is a second flash drive we're just gonna go ahead and hit start you get the warning message and hit OK and we're gonna let that run All right, now that that's finished, let's go ahead and pop this into our laptop and give it a whirl. All right, so first thing first, you're gonna go ahead and power it on. This part's gonna be pretty much identical to the first video. We're gonna go ahead and get into the boot menu. And we're gonna go to the UEFI boot and we're gonna pick the UEFI USB disk. And we're going to pick the installation. It's gonna say Android TV installation, not the live, not the debug. Hit enter. And you'll see this go through its paces. You're going to pick the XFAT partition. If there isn't one currently present, you'll just do detect devices and create one from scratch. You hit OK. You want to format it as X EXT4. You're going to hit yes. And it's going to actually, if you want to install the EFI Grub 2, you're going to hit yes. 
and you want to format the boot partition, you hit yes. Do you want to install the system directory as read write? You're going to hit yes. It's one of the beauties of Android. This kind of runs pretty fast being that it's such a small OS compared to Windows or a Mac OS. So you're gonna hit run Android TV and the system's gonna reboot. Now the big difference between this and the Android x86 is that it natively tries to do 720 or 1080p. So you may have some issues with the resolution and trying to set everything up. And just like that, we're already in. So one thing you're gonna do here is go down to the TV menu and you want to go down to version details and you want to check for updates. And we see that there's actually currently an update that we can install. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. At the bottom, you're gonna hit install. And it's telling you that the install will be placed in the data folder. And you're gonna to have to load the TWRP recovery option from the Grub2 menu. I'll show you that here in just a second. You like go ahead and reboot. And then from this menu, you're going to select recovery mode. Hit enter. And then you should see this menu here. And then from here you hit install. You're gonna go up to the data folder, select the zip folder, and you're going to swipe to confirm. It installs the update and then you just wanna hit reboot system. And tell it to swipe to install the TWRP app. And then you're going to run the Android TV 712. Let it go ahead and boot into the OS. And that's it, you're good to go. So with this version, it's a good bit quicker than using the Android x86 if you plan to use it for the TV. Like I said, if you want a dual functioning laptop, then I would say use the other option. If you want something that's dedicated as an Android TV box, I would say use the Android x86 port, the Android TV x86 port. It just functions better with the actual remote and with the actual apps that are going to be connected to the TV. You can still sideload apps like you would previously using uh, ES File Explorer or anything like that, but the apps that are meant to work on a TV usually work better going this route. All right, so a few takeaways before we continue. I just wanted to give you guys all of the real facts so you can make an educated decision on if you want to do this or not. So I don't make any promises, you know, this is all experimental and it's being updated as it goes. But so was Android when it first came out. It's always been a community developed operating system and that's the beauty of it. People can make changes and tweaks to the actual operating system and make it better for you over time. So some of the drawbacks that are here today may be gone tomorrow. 
So having to, you know, tweak this or that and use different apps that you may not prefer is something that I actually like to do. So this project may not be for everybody and I just want to be perfectly candid with that. But if you can deal with some of the hiccups as things improve, I guarantee that you'll be a lot more happier than buying a box, you know, from the store, especially because, you know, this is your own and it's actual equipment that's designed to be upgraded, unlike these boxes that are, you know, give and go and break over time. I was definitely surprised with my Fire TV that the Ethernet port went out, went out on it. It was such a robust device when I was using it, but I started having hiccups over time, including the remote and stuff like that. So again, this is experimental, use at your own risk. You also will have, like I mentioned, issues between the two versions, neither is perfect. You have to update this grub file every time you reboot to get the video to play to the main monitor and not the laptop monitor if you use a laptop. If you use a desktop, it only has one audio in most cases, audio and video out. So even if it's a display port, you can go from display port to HDMI and you won't have to edit this file. So that is one thing to think about if you have a desktop you can use instead of a laptop and you want to make this a permanent addition. I know a lot of people are using like the Intel Nooks, which are small little boxes that are about this big. And some people are using the Dell Optiplexes. I think they're using like the 7000 series. So you can look those up as well. They are a little bit more pricey because they're you know still in production, still being used. But it does give you the option to still have a small footprint like the Fire TV, but still have more computing power and still be able to do a little bit of tweaking and upgrading here like the hard drive or possibly the RAM as time goes by. So those are things to think about when you make this decision. I just wanna, again, to make sure I was clear on that. This isn't gonna be the end all be all, but neither are any of the Android devices. They all have their drawbacks and, and penalties for using them. The big difference is, like I said, the community support behind something like this, I've always seen over the years is a lot better when you have community involvement. Whereas with these different Android boxes, and even the Fire TV's customer support isn't always the best. I know when I had to replace the remote on my Fire TV previously, it was a headache and a hiccup and it took, you know, it took a good bit of time to actually get somebody to do something about it. Again, with the $15 remote I'm using for my system, you know, if it breaks, it breaks and I get another one in two days, you know, Amazon Prime shipping or through Walmart or through any of the other outlets or I could use any other Bluetooth or wireless device as well to control it. So that is a plus. So if you guys have any other questions or comments or about some of the other issues I've ran into, I'm not gonna try to make the video too long. I just wanted to give you guys some, some of my feedback and some of the things I've seen so you can make an educated decision. All right, so back to the install. Okay, so before the video ends, I just wanted to show you guys this cool air mouse that I picked up. You can find these on Amazon or eBay. Just search for an air mouse. All right, so let's see if I can open this with one hand and kind of show you guys what comes in the packaging at the same time. Yeah, I really need an assistant. <laughs> so here's your air mouse that you get. It comes with a little USB dongle, kind of like the ones you see on the Logitechs. Since it's radio frequency, you plug this in the back of the device and it makes it easy to hide. So you can kind of tuck this away, which I plan to do. So here's the front of it. It has volume keys, it has a back button, a menu, and a mouse pointer button. That's gonna be used for the air mouse feature, as well as the home button. And the power button can be used to actually control the on-off power for your TV, which I plan to use as well. So, Let's go ahead and get the dongle plugged in and get this guy set up. All right, so and you hit the air mouse button. Let's see if you guys can see that. Uh, try that again. Okay, so when you hit the air mouse button, you can actually move the mouse around just by using the controller as like a wand sort of. So it kind of moves wherever you point it. And let's go ahead and just open the app real quick. Uh, go ahead and open YouTube, that's always a good one. And as you can see, it's pretty responsive. There's not much lag here. It pretty much goes where you want it and moves 
I mean, almost immediately. So I think this is a good tool to have, especially since there are some apps, even that are native, that just don't work properly. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for the second video in this series. Hopefully you guys learned something and you'll have a few takeaways in case you plan to do this at home. So again, for me, the main reason I wanted to do it was because my Fire TV was failing and I wanted to see if there were any other options out there. So this Android x86 project has been going on for a couple of years now, but it's finally to the point where people have really fine-tuned a lot of the kinks out of it. One of the things that I would like to see in the future, which I think they're still working on, is a way to actually edit the grub file permanently without any major hiccups or headaches with actually having to do a lot more tweaking. So for me, it works out. I'm fine with when I reboot it, having to change that file and that path like I showed you guys where you use the video equals EDP minus one colon D. So that works, but it could be a hassle if you aren't as comfortable making that change or if you have to reset the device a lot. I got mine pretty stable where I don't really need to reset it as much. Having to deactivate the audio drivers in the BIOS helped a lot because when I would pause the video a lot of times or leave the device unattended, the audio would try to go back through the headphone jack. So changing that was a big help. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with the results, especially considering the price of the device and it will always be upgradable in the future a lot more than some of these other devices. You know, I can add a larger hard drive. I can add more RAM up to a certain degree, which would still be leaps and bounds above what most of these Android boxes have these days. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave me a comment and make sure you like and subscribe so you can see more stuff like this as it comes out. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks.